What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts, and I'm back with another Texans film breakdown today by High Demand. We are going to be looking at cornerback Lonnie Johnson. And shoutouts to those who recommended him will be right after the film. So I think we can all say that Lonnie, he didn't have the greatest rookie season, but that should be expected. Cornerback is the toughest position on defense to make that leap from college to the NFL. It's such a tough position with so little room for error, and you have to be perfect with your technique. And that technique is something that we knew Lonnie would need a bit of work on. His film from Kentucky showed an athletic freak. You know, 6'2", 213, 4'5", 38 inch vert. He was a specimen, and he was raw to learning the position. So even though he was a second round pick, we needed to have patience with him and let him develop. He's got all the tools to become a cornerback one one day, and if you've been following him over the offseason, he's been putting in major work, which you've got to have the work ethic if you're going to get better and figure it out. So I'm going to show today the flashes of his potential he showed last season, but also what he's got to work on to become better. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. As of now, only 24% of y'all are subscribed, so I would really appreciate it if that 76% could hit that sub button. Now, let's break down the film of Lonnie Johnson, because the film don't lie. So the first thing we gotta talk about is Lonnie Johnson's natural athletic gifts, his length, is crazy. He's got 32 and a half inch arms, which is in the 90th percentile of draft prospects that year. And I already talked about his 452 40 yard dash, which is crazy. And that helps him recover back into this play and use his length as a weapon to break up this ball, timing it perfectly and playing it through the air. But let's see why Lonnie had to recover in the first place. So the wide receiver, he's going to take one step inside, faking an inside route. And as a cornerback, you want to stay square as long as possible. So Lonnie does a good job of being patient and not biting on that fake and flipping his hips inside. Because if he did that, I honestly don't think he could have recovered very easily. But it looks like this transition isn't the fastest when he's turning to the right. So he does a good job to stay low initially throughout the release, but you want to stay low throughout the transition as well to be able to move quickly and fluidly with the wide receiver. And I know it's very subtle and hard to tell, but when he turns to the outside here, he pops up. He isn't as low anymore, and that's what makes this transition a bit tougher for him and why he loses a step on Demarcus Robinson. And We at Texans Unfiltered actually had an interview with the legendary cornerback Antonio Cromartie and James, he talked to him and Crow said that Lonnie's main problem is that he plays high. It's hard for someone of his height to stay low throughout the route, but that's the main thing that he needs to work on. And that interview will be linked in the description below. Y'all should for sure check that out. But getting back to Lonnie, his speed and length, it's really just such a weapon when they're paired together. And that gives him all the potential in the world to be a great outside cornerback. And so on this play, he's able to play trail technique. So he's got the inside leverage and he's trailing from behind. And because this throws a little bit to the inside, he's in perfect position. He uses that long arm, gets his hand into the catch point and breaks it up nicely. And one of the best examples from last season of him using his length as a weapon was this PBU on the fake punt. Look at how high he gets up, that vert also he's shown off, and then the length there because he's not in the perfect position. You know, the Titans player right here, he has a bit of a step on him, but Lonnie's radius, like people talk about catch radius for a wide receiver. Lonnie's like, I don't know, pass breakup radius is ridiculous because of his height, length, and vertical. And you see that on full display right here. Another area where his length is weapon is definitely on jump ball in the end zone against Mike Williams here and he's able to just box him out really nicely and break up a potential throw if that was accurate he was in perfect position to shut it down now the next most important part of Lonnie Johnson's game is his physicality his jams can be so nasty and he uses that length really as a weapon not only at the catch point but also throughout the route to throw off wide receivers and even tight ends like Travis Kelsey and their timing and man he locked him down this game it was crazy he was just you could tell he was in his head with his physicality man he shot him down and on this play you can see that he's got a really nice jam he shoots his hands into the chest of Travis Kelsey and that's a big dude, man. It is hard to throw him off his route, throw him off his release like he just did right here, but Lonnie Johnson does it. He's big too. He's 6'2", 213, and he's strong. He's got that dog mentality where he ain't going back down from any fight. He ain't scared of Travis Kelsey. He wants that matchup. And in that first game, man, he gave him all that he could handle. And it wasn't just on that one PBU. He was jamming him and throwing him off his game the entire time that he was on him. I mean, this type of physicality against the premier tight end in the NFL, that's crazy, man. 
He also shut down Demarcus Robinson. Look at this jam right here. He holds on to him for so long, and it's great. And it's within the five yards, so it's not a penalty. And just look at his length here right now. That's insane reach. And if he's able to punch wide receivers before they can get into him, before they can make a move and stall their release, then that gives him a huge advantage. And this is locked down, man. As a cornerback, your job is so hard, so any advantage that you have, you need to use that to its fullest extent. And Lonnie definitely does that with his length, and yeah, he can get a little bit too grabby sometimes, but and we'll talk about that later, but... Look at this play here where he just completely throws off the stem of this wide receiver. He starts off inside because he's trying to go outside on this out. And when he's at the stem here and he's trying to push off to get outside, Lonnie's just not having it. He's saying, nah, I'm sticking right with you. I'm making this as tough as possible. If you're going to get a catch on me, I'm going to make you earn it. And so he's in good enough position here to scare off the quarterback from throwing it because this might be like a little bit of space here because of Lonnie's length as well. He's going to be able to fight back into that play and break it up. So that's good coverage. Next, we're going to talk about his potential impress. You know, we've seen his physicality is great and impress. He's not always going to jam. You know, sometimes he's just going to give them a free release and he's still got to stay in position and he does well really here against the Patriots. This is honestly one of the best reps I've seen from him all of past year. And what I love is how he stays square for so long throughout the route until now. Boom. Then he starts to run. He's not having any of the fakes that the wide receiver is throwing at him. He's not flipping his hips too early and I'll get to the detriment of that very soon. But I love this play out of him, and he's able to stay in phase throughout the entire route, look back, play the ball really well, and it's just a great example of all aspects of his game coming together for perfect coverage. Here's another one where the wide receiver, he fakes inside, and Lonnie's just not having it. He stays square for so long. He's not too jumpy. He has good patience here, and it allows him to stay in perfect position. And you can see that his hips are fine here. When he's able to stay square, he's able to flip them outside and run with the wide receiver just fine. But it's when he gets over aggressive and flips them in the opposite direction that that's the point where he's not able to recover. So his hips are what we're going to talk about next. And like I showed, like Lonnie, he's got so much potential and press. He's just got to fine tune a little couple things. Just the nuances of the game that come with learning in the NFL. And he can be really damn good. And so on this play, the wide receiver DJ Moore, he's going to fake a couple steps outside right here. And Lonnie, he's going to really respect it and really buy that fake. He completely turns his hips outside to respect that and to turn and run with it. And when he plants and explodes off inside, Lonnie's just not able to recover. He's not, he doesn't even try and flip his hips inside. Instead, he tries to speed turn from the outside and he just gives up so much space here. The thing about wide receivers is that their first cut is rarely ever where they're actually going. They're always trying to sell you to go in the opposite direction. And so Lonnie, he's just got to learn that you know the nfl they've got way better route runners than he faced in college and so he's got to learn to have patience to stay square and just be more consistent with it because like i showed in previous clips like he's shown the ability he knows that staying square is going to help him we saw that earlier but then there are these plays where he's just too aggressive maybe the game just hasn't slowed down for him yet and that's to be expected of a rookie cornerback these are very rookie mistakes and on this play against Mike Williams, who's actually a very underrated route runner, he's going to take this release inside and Lonnie's going to go with him and he's going to flip his hips inside. And you're going to see that right here at this point. They're in boom, they're inside. And as soon as they're flipped inside, Mike Williams, he's going to boom, he's going to cut outside. And that's what screws with Lonnie Johnson, because if he stayed square, if he was continuing to stack this wide receiver and just stayed square instead of over committing, he would have com been completely fine and he would have been able to stick with the cut to the outside. But because he got a bit antsy, whatever it is, he flipped his hips inside and that just puts him in a position to fail. And here's a great example of why I say cornerbacks have to play perfect, because he's going to take a very, very slight step inside, going with that fake, and then boom, he's burnt. And any cornerback, when they're burnt like this, they're going to be in a bit of a panic mode. And so when the ball gets there, he's get he gets a bit handsy before the catch point is down and gets the flag. And so you're going to see right here, Lonnie square, but then the wide receiver, he takes that fake to the inside. And Lonnie takes one and kind of two, one and like a half steps, so subtle. And it's just that little tiny movement that throws him off. And like I said, like there's so little room for error. That little tiny movement gets him behind for the entire route. And that's just one of the reasons why cornerback play is so, so tough. And so that's going to get me into my next point where we saw how Lonnie's physicality, it can really be a plus to his game. However, he's got to learn to find the balance between being physical and not being too handsy and grabby throughout the route. 
He can be real physical at the jam, but he's got to be more subtle af after the release and when he's in phase throughout the route because he did get penalized quite a lot last year. He was called for six defensive pass interferences and three defensive holdings. And I'm not going to run through all of them, but just a couple. And the theme for me is when he gets beat, he can sometimes rely on his hands a little bit too much to try and hold the wide receiver and get back into position. And you just can't do that. The refs, some of these are a little bit more blatant and the refs just are going to call that every time. This one against Kelsey, the initial jam is fine because that's five yards, but then boom, at that point when he's caught hanging on because of the cut, that's what they call it for. And that's an area where he's honestly just has to get better at. And it's something that he'll learn because, because Gary Ann Conley is someone who's very, very good at holding on to wide receivers very subtly throughout the phase of the route. And hopefully he can teach Lonnie that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with Lonnie is he's not the greatest in off coverage. He's just not that good at clicking and closing and driving downhill on a route and making the tackle. And that's completely fine. I love him so much more in press and off man, his hips here just... It's very, very hard for him to get turned around like that because an off man, you have to be a little bit more aggressive with the paths that you take. And if he's not able to stay physical with people to feel breaks, then it's going to end up pretty bad for him. And that's completely fine because cornerbacks are so scheme dependent. As long as we keep him in press where he's a lot better and shown more promise, then he's going to be put in a position to succeed. So that'll do it for my Lonnie Johnson breakdown. This was one of the most requested videos. So shout out Matthew Banks, Dayon Crumley, Tay Dime, Zavante Lovings, Manel Ponte, Ronald Jones, Loud White Boy, Luke McClure, D'Lo, Joe Tato, Manel Ponte again, this dude must be Lonnie's burner, Gonzo the Great, and he won't pass. I apologize if I pronounced anyone's names wrong or missed your comment about Lonnie Johnson, but I really do appreciate all of y'all's support and love interacting with you in the comments. Now that I've broken down the film, I hope it's apparent to see where Lonnie Johnson does well and where he still needs work. I really want to stress patience with him. Don't move him to safety like a lot of people want him to do. Let him learn corner, which takes time, but he's got the potential with his athletic gifts, he's shown promise, even though he's raw, and he's been putting the work in to be great. And that's all we can really ask of him. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. If you're still listening, you're a real one. I appreciate you. And the question of the day is... Do you think Lonnie should be starting on the outside with Conley and then Roby in the slot? Or do you think Roby should be on the outside, then we bring in Hargraves or John Reed in the nickel, and Lonnie's just on tight ends? Let me know. Also, I'm a part of Texans Unfiltered. I write articles about the Texans on our awesome website, and we've got a great weekly podcast as well. So if you're itching for more Texans content, we got you. The links will be in the description. Alright, this was Jordan or Texans Thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Take care, everyone, and remember, the film, don't lie.